let's say he, he stopped me, right? And then I can flow, I can do whatever I want, right? Not very flawless, right? But let's say with the same context, but now he's using a real knife. Hi, this is Jay from Easy Wing Chun. If you never heard of Easy Wing Chun, we are a YouTube channel about martial arts and fitness and sports science. So if you want to learn more about self-defense, about Wing Chun, about Kung Fu and martial arts in general, make sure you subscribe first. And today's topic is how to make soft structure work. I'm gonna go over two very important main points with demo and examples for you guys easy to follow. You ready? Let's go. So the first main point is usually people always refer of being soft is you using the structure, using the techniques so that the amount of input force is not that significant but the output is a lot. That basically is you using a technique to overcome your muscular strength, right? In my opinion, this is really, really important, but so is hard. Being hard is not a bad thing because, okay, come in, right? Let's say a normal, like when you can chain punch, right? It's gonna look like this, right? Like, that is a lot of speed, right? But let's say when I punch K with the same amount of force like that, right? doesn't do anything to him, right? You need, like, okay, to be simplest, right? A punch is a punch, right? It got the whole mechanics, the whole physics science and about that, right? You need to throw enough velocity and your body mass, right? So basically you need enough muscular strength and explosiveness to make that punch count, right? So let's say if I put in like muscular strength, this is what it looks like, right? Ready? You see, as soon as I put in actual muscle powers, he fly back, right? Yet, some people with their skills, they can make the soft work, right? But it requires like a lot of skills, right? And for me, in my humble opinion, I think that they should be balanced, like yin and yang, right? You need soft and you need hard. You don't need to believe me. Just look at pro athletes. When you look at them, they spend a huge amount of time to refine their motor skills and working on their sports specific skill set, right? But none of them is obese or overweight or not in a good shape, right? And in fact, they're much stronger compared to your average individual, right? One thing to keep in mind though, you're not the one who determine that. I myself cannot determine that either. The one who determines that is the environment, the factor, the stimulus, right? Let's say K come in. Let's say K throw a low hook at me, right? I can stop him and turn him and lock him, right? Break him easily, right? I'm doing this one, right? Very soft, right? But let's say I change the stimulus a bit, right? Now let's say he got a knife, right? So he do the same thing. So as soon as I stop, and then I do this, you see how the knife is really close to my face? Now he can cut me quite easily, right? So what I want to do is, let's say when K stop me, right? I want to like fly his knife away. So when I yank his heart like this, now he, he fly, right? So it's not about which is better. It's about when to apply it. That have the most effective results, right? Because like I said, you're doing soft, yeah? You got a chance that getting cut, right? But when I yank his heart like this, if he not drop the knife like earlier, and then he fly like this, now you're safe, right? Now you can attack him. Now I think you can punch around five times before this knife come back to you, right? At that time, he already dropped to the ground, right? The next main point I want to talk about is when being said, when people said that being soft, they refer to like mentally soft, like you calm and relax, right? If you look at a really top athlete, right? Like legends, like uh, Senjai's Mei Tai, right? Or even Pukao, right? When they fight, 
they're laughing, right? When they fight, they chill. They they don't have like that kind of tension, like oh oh he gonna punch. No, they come into the ring, they go like this, like Mike Tyson. Every time I watch Mike Tyson, the thing that impressed me is he start at his corner and then he just go go right up to the guys, right? That very important. But many people will say that yeah, of course, because they legend, because the guy skills is lower than them and then they don't feel that dangerous they don't feel they're in danger that's why they're not tense that's why they're generally not going up because according to sport science when you're in the dangerous mode right you in you activate the sympathetic nervous system so now you either fight or flight right so your adrenaline go up your blood pressure go up right everything ready for you to fight or flight right so how can you relax from that but then when you look at doctor, right? When they do surgery, for example, do you want a um, nervous doctor that go in there and then got adrenaline and then panic? Or you want a doctor come in and then calm, like when he perform a surgery, he's like, oh, just like drinking coffee, I just do it in the morning, right? Who do you want, right? So think about it. And then there's many things that could happen that make you, how can I say it? that make you unstable in your mind, right? Let's say if K come in and then and then he got a knife, right? Let's say he, he stabbed me, right? And then I can flow, I can do whatever I want, right? That very flawless, right? But let's say with the same context, but now he's using a real knife, right? So now when he using a real knife and stop me and then if i try to flow like this right in real life i'm gonna just stop so when he stop at me one thing i want to do is i want to move out of it right away and then like stop see i move it and then i attack i attack i attack i attack i attack right right i don't want to stay this close to the knife that's dangerous right he can cut me right now and then i'm going like this he can cut me right now right a real knife will change this, right? That happens in a lot of like Krav Maga or tactical self-defense because people train with rubber knife and then they think they safe in the street. But when they see an actual crackhead with an actual knife, they just run right? all of their tactical self-defense stuff just gone out of the windows, right? So how can you keep yourself calm in this particular situation? There are many things you can do by, by yourself, right? You can meditate. Right? You can sitting, standing, meditate, whatever, right? You can do open focus. You can even like train the form slowly. A lot of um, traditional art, they train the form slowly so that they meditate, so they just focus, right? That make you relax the other part of the body. That's very important because in sports science, they noted that, that as soon as your mind change, your behavior, like, what happened inside your body actually changed. So the mind will affect the physical body too. So when you train to be relaxed by yourself like that, you technically you just become softer, you just become more relaxed, and then you can prepare yourself for the fighting situation or a dangerous situations, right? Of course, it cannot help you to be really, really 100% calm in front of a real knife, right? but it already helped you a lot in your daily life and improve your fighting skills, right? And then the next step you want to be is you want to be relaxed as an actual punch, right? As an actual attack, right? Stop, like, uh, trust talk yourself. Like, stop, you know, make fantasy for yourself, right? Just test it. Make sure it works. Now your mind feels safe, right? And it's the same when people say that, um, when people say about, like, you all, the only time you relax is when the guy skill is lower and then you don't feel yourself in danger. Yes, that's why we always have to make the classroom is much harder. But no matter how hard it could be, how realistic it could be, it never the same like in the street, right? Let's say K come in, right? And then he punched me, he's punched me really hard, right? On the first day of class, of course, what you want to do is you want to get it to the sign. You want like, oh, that's scary. I want to get it to the sign. And then you panic. Yes, but it takes time, right? Relaxation is the process. You need to earn that, right? 
So now when he punched me, and then, okay, maybe the next day of class, you're like, okay, I can attack him fast, and then go right at him, right? So that I go right into the dentures, right? And then the next day, you try, when he punched you, you can feel where the next shot is. So now, boom, I'm right here. He can attack me, right? So I move here, and then I attack here, right? So I attack him right when I move so that he cannot attack me back, right? So you land on the next shot, and then you keep improving, improving until the point where when he punch you, right? You can throw him, and then you walk into the attack. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then you can walk into the attack. You can walk into the real stimulus. Just like earlier, when he got a knife, I'm not panic. He's like, just do my things, right? That is very important. Just like in Sting Yi, there's a very old quote. That's like, when you train by yourself, always imagine an opponent. When you train with an actual person, always imagine that the person is not there. And another thing to keep in mind before this video ends is that you need to notice that everything is specific, right? Like in sport. Like let's say you want to kick the ball, you need to train that sport specific skill set. So it's in self-defense or martial arts is the same. It depends on what you want to do. If you want to go to sport tournament, if you want to sparring, then you train in a sparring manner. If you want self-defense, then you train in a self-defense manner, right? Don't just take the sparring as an actual certificate. Let's say you can spar, then you can be set in the street. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to have the idea where, let's say, okay, you're good at sparring, that's good. So that means you can function, you can punch, you can kick, right? You can keep the distance. You work on your timing, that's good. But you need to work on, let's say, if the guy may pull a knife, right? If the guy may hit friends, now you have to train a multiple skill set so that you can work on the self-defense much better. And like I said, practice make perfect. So you need to practice the hell out of it until when you do it, you just feel like you're just eating breakfast, right? Nothing special about it. You don't even bother when you're doing it. It's like the fly fly and then you just boom, you just kill it, right? You have to nail it till that point. So now when you walk out the street, you'll be set, right? That's it for today's tutorial. Like I said all the time, right? Enjoy the week and make sure you train hard.